Hello there hackers, welcome back to the new video and I'm not doing any face cam today but yeah here we are. So in this video we'll be talking about a weird way you can bypass two-factor authentication. Now I'm pretty sure a lot of you not know about this one because there are like multiple ways you can bypass 2FA but I think maybe a lot of you don't know about this one so I'm going to show you a live demonstration of how you can find this vulnerability and test it also why it's working like what's going on behind the scenes so let's get into it so I set up an application okay so let me copy it running on port 5000 and I have my burp browser here so let me paste it and you will see not found because there is nothing running on this path because the path we want to go is slash api slash login okay hope you can see it basically in 2fa the first step is you type the username and password or email or password to log in okay so we have this user admin and its password is password one two three now after typing valid credentials you will get a prompt to type in a 2FA code just like this. So here you get the 2FA code either in your email, your SMS or in your Google Authenticator or Okta, I don't know. So when you type the 2FA code, you verify it and then you're logged in. Cool. That's how the normal process usually works. Let me show you. So for the demonstration purpose, I have set a 2FA code here and the 2FA code is 123456. Simple. And now I'll see a message, welcome to protected endpoint, you have access. So as you can see, the endpoint now is slash API slash protected, which is an authenticated endpoint. Now, what do I mean by authenticated endpoint? I want to explain it to beginners. Well, there are some endpoints that you can access without authentication, but there are some endpoints that only a user with a session cookie should access. For example, your user details, um, your email, your address or your payment details. So these are the endpoints that fetches these details for you. And these endpoints should be properly authenticated. And for authentication, these endpoints check for session cookies or tokens or JWT tokens, whatever. So basically to verify if you are who you say you are. Well, someone did ask this um, question in the comments, the difference between authentication and authorization. So if you already know this, you can skip this part, but if you don't know, authentication helps the application identify if you are who you say you are. If you are John Doe, prove it you are John Doe, <laughs> okay? And there are multiple ways of doing it, but in case of authorization, even if you are like an authenticated user, are you still allowed to access some specific functions like some admin functions you're not allowed to do that right it's like you're entering inside a building you can enter it's valid humans are allowed but once you're inside a building there's a particular door where only staffs are allowed so you're not that staff right you cannot enter that door so that is authorization hope that makes sense so this is done now let's go back to the login and let me show you that weird way to bypass 2FA authentication. Now I'm going to type admin and password again, password123. So you know the username and password and you're thinking how, how do I know username and password? This is just a scenario, let's say an attacker found this username and password in some kind of breach. A lot of breach happened, you see a lot of news going on. So yeah, when the breach happens, people think, okay, they have the username and password but they don't have my 2FA code, right? There's no way they can hack me. This is a false assumption. They can still hack you if the application is using some kind of weak 2FA verification. Here we are as a tester, as a security researcher or a bug bounty hunter, let's say you don't know the 2FA code. What are you going to do here? Let me show you something. So we can do this in the network tab, but I'm going to use Burp suit. Let's capture the request in Burp. And here we have the get request to slash API slash 2FA. Let's take this to repeater and turn this off. Send the request. And we have this uh, normal 200, okay. Notice a cookie here. This is the session cookie now. The server send you a session cookie. And this session cookie 
helps them to verify your 2FA code. Now, once you verify the 2FA code, the server sets a new session cookie and that session cookie is for you that you can use for accessing authenticated endpoints like the endpoint we saw earlier slash API slash protected or it could be anything slash API slash user details slash API slash bank details anything that is authenticated endpoint. Now, sometimes what happens is the application sets a cookie and you can use the same session cookie to access the protected endpoint directly. What do I mean by that? Let me show you. So we know the name of the protected endpoint, right? Through your analysis, you found out multiple protected endpoints. So you are testing one of the protected endpoints here, slash API slash protected. You send the request. Notice that I haven't typed any 2FA code here yet, but I'm still going to send the request and I get a response to it. Okay, welcome to the protected endpoint. You have access. What the heck is going on? Basically, you're able to bypass 2FA code because the application is not verifying the session cookies properly. What is doing it? It was supposed to send you a new session cookie after 2FA is verified. And that new session cookie you can use to access sensitive endpoints. But it's using the same session cookies for both, it seems. And it's validating it as well. So basically, there is no point of even putting this 2FA code verification here because it's not even checking it properly if the 2FA code was passed there or not because 2FA code was supposed to be tied to a session cookie and that session cookie should be different than the session cookie you get after typing the 2FA code. You're getting what I'm saying? So this is kind of unique and I have seen people finding these kind of bugs. I was once scrolling on LinkedIn and I saw a blog someone talked about this vulnerability and and hit me i thought maybe i should tell you as well if some of you were missing it so i found this really cool you can definitely try this out so i just wanted to make a quick video on this one hope you liked watching it and by the way guys i've noticed a lot of you are not still subscribed to my channel so don't forget to subscribe right now we are trying to hit goal of minimum 15k this month so let me know your thoughts, what you want me to talk about in the next videos, and I'll see you in the next one.